Walt Bettinger, CEO of Charles Schwab. Welcome to the Industrialist Dilemma and to Stanford. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Rob. It's a pleasure to be here. So when the company started, the company started by disrupting the equities market. And yet now you have $3.3 trillion under management at the company. So you've gone from this disruptive you know, upstart to what has become a very, very important player in the financial services space, but yet the company still thinks of itself as a disruptor. Yeah, Can you tell sure. us a little bit about that? Yeah. Well, I think our view is that disruption doesn't have anything to do with how large you are or how long you've been in, dis in existence. Disruption is really a state of mind, and it revolves around two things. One is your focus on your customers, and not mm -hmm. just their needs today, but also the anticipation of what their needs will be. And then the second, oddly enough, we think it's just courage. It's the willingness to recognize that in order to grow, in order to evolve in the business world we live in today, you have to be willing to say, we do this for customers today, we've done this for a long time, but it's not the right thing anymore. We're going to have to change and actually disrupt ourselves. So when you have to change something, one of the important things we've talked about in the past is trust. Yeah. In fact, I think when we met last time, you must have used the word trust a hundred times. How do you try new things and yet still maintain that trust with your customers and your clients? Well, our business is so much different than other businesses because it's about people's money. Mm -hmm. And it's about what we call OPM or other people's money. And the way people deal with finances is much more emotional than maybe mm. buying a new suit or even buying a new car. And the other thing you have to bear in mind when you're dealing with money is that the markets don't just go up. Mm -hmm. They go down too. And so unlike, say, a traditional uh, retail model or a web-based model, we're going to have our clients disappointed maybe 40% of the time when mm -hmm. the markets move down. And so trust has to be at the core of the services we provide so that they believe and stay invested and help themselves in the long run by being in the market even though they're ups and downs. So if you have you know, a great number of clients, a lot of capital under management, trust is important and now we have new technologies, data and information and you know a lot about your customers. How do you take data and use it in your business in a way that helps build trust? And what are the risks that you've seen where it hasn't gone maybe as you anticipated? Sure, sure. Well, we do have a lot of data, a lot of information on our clients. What we want to do with that information is find better ways to serve them, to serve their needs. What we don't want to do is use that data in a manner that undermines the trust that we just finished speaking about. And, and that can be complicated because oftentimes we can know things about our clients mm -hmm that maybe others don't know. If they, for example, go to our website to the life event section and click on divorce, we might know something before their <laughs> spouse does. And right. so what we do with that information to ensure that it's both held confidentially, but also used to serve them, not sell, is very, very mm -hmm. important in the building of trust. How do you think about the younger generation, the newer Schwab clients who want to interact with companies in different way, the importance of mobile, um, less time they want to spend on the phone? How do you use tools to help them as they get into saving and investing? And how do you have to treat those customers differently perhaps than say my generation? Well, what's really interesting is that the use of mobile platforms, digital is not age centric. Mm. We actually have customers in all age ranges up into the 90s who are on their mobile devices on the web interacting with us in a more digital manner. What we want to try to do is use technology to better serve uh, our mm -hmm. clients in the areas where they don't want to necessarily speak to someone. They can process something faster by just doing it in a digital or in an online manner. But we also want to make sure that there's not a trade-off so mm -hmm. that our clients can always speak to us about things that are important to have a live person having a conversation with. So in the early days of Schwab, the company was a technological innovator and built its own back end for trades and everything else. And now in today's world, uh, managing as, as large of an organization as you are, how do you decide what technologies that Schwab wants to invest in and keep in-house and where do you want to look to partner with other outside organizations and what are things that might impact your companies that might not impact other large companies yes. and partnerships? Yes. Well, the challenge with technology is it's increasingly difficult, we view, to create sustainable differentiation mm -hmm. on technology. Mm -hmm. What one organization can build, other organizations can build uh, quite similarly. Mm -hmm. And so we leverage technology partners in areas that we consider more commoditized. And the type of work we do in-house is things that we think are unique to us in creating unique capabilities. One of the other dilemmas in an industry like ours, which has such 
stringent oversight from f right. a federal regulation standpoint is anyone we partner with really has to have the same level of regulatory oversight mm -hmm. that we do. And that rules out a lot of technology companies for us to try to do business together with. So as you look forward the next five to 10 years and you think about all the changes that you've seen in the business, you've now uh, been with the company over 20 years since they acquired your first company. What do you think about over the next five to 10 years? What are the top two or three things that are keeping you up at night? Well, the thing that's happening in our industry is not different than what's happening across business everywhere. And that is this concept of no trade-offs. Mm -hmm. The consumer can expect and will actually be able to get the lowest price the best service and world-class advice. That's not what has historically been the way the world operated in the investment services arena, that you made a trade-off historically. Mm -hmm. I can have low cost, but I may not get the best service, or I can have great advice, but boy, am I gonna pay a premium to get it. All those walls are breaking down, and mm -hmm. the consumer's going to be able to get everything that they might desire without trade-offs. Frankly, we think they get that today at Schwab, and that's partly why we've been acquiring market share as rapidly as we have. So one final question, why is Schwab able to do that when other companies can't, be it the old line wirehouses or the new upstarts that are coming up in the fintech space? How are you and your organization able to be successful where others haven't been? Well, I think there's a lot of companies that have successful models that work for them, but ours is a bit unique. We combine tremendous scale mm -hmm. uh, with well over $3 trillion in, in client assets, tremendous efficiency, operating at a fraction of the cost of any of our publicly traded competitors. Mm -hmm. We don't have legacy infrastructure, for example, high paid salespeople, things mm -hmm. of that nature. And of course, we've always been, as you mentioned from the beginning, technology driven. And so mm -hmm. we're in this constant effort to figure out ways to use technology to be more efficient, enhance service, but also lower our costs. And then the last thing, we're always willing to share it back with our clients. Last year alone, mm -hmm. we voluntarily reduced our pricing to clients to the tune of about 5% of our overall revenue, and yet mm -hmm. still grew revenue in the mid-teens. So really you are trying to be in that one quadrant where you're the low cost leader and the high service provider. I think that's the only way organizations win going forward in our business society. You're going to have to be the no trade-offs companies to really be the big winners. Walt, thank you so much for coming to Stanford and thank you for coming to our class. It's an honor to be here. Thanks so much. Pleasure to have you. Thanks.